What is up? Got it, dude. What's going on? What's up? Jared, yes. what's up? What's going Wow, 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 wow. What is going on here? What in the? We are getting jiggy over here. So, all right. How's this thing going? What's going on, Scotty? Oh, uh, man, nothing. I just, uh. Open the door, so right? I told Zev it's hard for me to, to boogie. Can you guys hear me good? Yeah. So it's hard for me to boogie because we do practices on Mondays and Wednesdays, but I thought I'd be able to get back. And then I saw Jody was hooked up with you guys. I'm like, oh, cool. Well, she'll probably cover it, but it's good that I caught you guys. So yeah, we, what's up, fellas? We don't have to go late, man. We can, no, 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 it's cool. Whatever, whatever you need, whatever we're doing, man, this is cool. <laughs> I want to try to like boost my, my self up here because I'm low rider so that's I some, love- uh, do you have some telephone books to send do they still do telephone books don't <laughs> I just set up uh, telephone books. No. I, hey I just scott remember when we did my other interview when i was in my <laughs> office with you and jody oh yeah i actually cut two pieces of mat <laughs> to like prop me up <laughs> i didn't tell anyone i've never told you <laughs> so i had like like four inches because like it got the right camera angle and the right light you had a booster seat i love it there's no glare at that point Oh yeah. Oh, that uh, cool light works. That's cool. Dude, that light is B A, man. Yeah. So it's one of those um like uh like yeah, color light bulbs. Some dude made it for us. It's really cool. That is so cool. Yeah. How was practice tonight? Did you scrap? I didn't do any wrestling, man. It was uh I had planned on it. It's weird. I don't um I'm kind of slowing down how much wrestling I actually do anymore. I like wrestling, but I just didn't I just didn't get around to it. So do you just listen to your body and kind of know, or how do you like? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it's not even like that. I've been beat up or anything. It's just, I'm, I'm just not, it's just not a priority. You know, sometimes it's more of a priority. You want to jump in and just get your, you know, like wrestle with the dudes and get your hands on them and help them out and, you know, get a workout at the same time. And I just haven't been, you know what I mean? I just haven't Mm -hmm. been, eager to do it I've been when you jump watching. into you can't like see the whole room it's like yeah. two different styles of practice right yeah and we're trying to with these tournaments going on with our club we're doing both you know greco and freestyle so we're trying to facilitate both during practice so it's tough to jump you know back and forth and then be in there you know actually physically taking place so i've just been choosing not to wrestle you know, but it, I, like, I was kind of wanting to wrestle today, but just the way the practice was going, um, the feel of the practice, I just, it was better for me to stay out. You Jody I mean? said Gary Howell's helping out. What an awesome dude. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we have, you know, what it, that's good for, you know, BTW because we haven't really had that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we haven't been able to offer Greco in a, in a, uh, what's the, in a the proper fashion you know i mean eric and i could do very minimal greco stuff but um you know not we're not hip to you know all the the new techniques and the new and you have will knight come in from time to time but gary's you know yeah yeah closer will, to will my pops in. yeah will's popped in in the past you know during camps and stuff and um you know facilitated some greco stuff but it's really cool because now it gives our kids the opportunity to do, to do both. I mean, we were just talking about it tonight um, at our practice, our kids doing both. And how I was telling our guys, just, it was almost like when we were younger, we just did both. You know what I mean? I, I remember being like, we drive to the qualifier, you sign up for Greco and freestyle. Um, we go to central regional, you do Greco freestyle. Um, so, you know, for our kids to be able to, embrace and understand like why you want to do both it's really really uh it's good you know and i'm glad we're able to offer that you realize that every every time you don't practice they're they're gaining ground on you and they're going to catch you and they're closing the gap between you and them you know that right yeah so we were remember earlier yeah and it's but you know what man i'm it's really weird because i'm not even when it comes down to being like it's a competitive thing. I, I just don't even care. Like, I don't, if, like when they start kicking my butt, you know, and, you know, beating me up, it'll hopefully be because they're, they're jumping levels and we're training them. Right. You know what I mean? Like we're teaching them. Right. 
they're improving, they're getting stronger. Um, you know, my strength training isn't probably how it should be to continue to stay. I, I just don't, I want to be able to take them to new levels, you know, stay in, in, in decent shape, help them out. But I mean, you know, we were talking about gray, eventually gray will get to the point where when he's in high school, he's going to be tracking me down and, you know, just in my butt and getting after me. But, you know, he's built for it. You know, I mean, that's, you want your, your athletes should, they should pass us, right? Circle of life. It should be like the, eventually the old lion gets smacked around by a young lion and then you gotta, it has to limp around the Serengeti with its paw up, you know, and it's like, go to a watery <laughs> hole and like hang out. <laughs> right. Uh, but what, you know what I mean? It, but it's cool. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like I'm actually at a good spot with it. You know what I mean? I'm physically, you know, with, with us getting into spring, I'm eager to get back out and start running a little bit, you know, like doing some running and some cross training. And a lot of times in the spring and summer, I get into that groove and that helps me stay more limber and just loose to be able to wrestle. So, um, not that I'm old, but when you get to be 41 and you've been wrestling for a long time, you know, you're just, your body's just beat up. You know what I mean? And it's just, it is, is what it is. Part of life, part of life. Yeah. Yeah. So you so guys you, had, a, you had a phenomenal year this year too, though. You had a great year as your, as your team. Perrysburg had a great year. Yeah, man. Yes. We, our kids, our team, our program, um, we, we had a breakthrough season as far as, um, you know, not, I mean, not so much breakthrough from us because we, we kind of looked at our kids and our team and, you know, where we were strong and our experience level and our, you know, and, you know, we have a really good coaching staff that's really good at staying in the moment and being able to, as we're progressing through something, um, break stuff down. So as we navigated the season, you know, we started looking at individual rankings, weight classes, um, you know, where our kids were good individually. Uh, and, you know, we started thinking, man, we can make a run. And then, um, you know, we, you know, we had a great sectional and then that carried over into districts and, and then our, you know, we had a great district, you know, we, it, it, program history, we, we had the most chance we've ever had. I think we scored the most points we've ever scored. You know, we finished second, um, which I think might've been the highest in school history team placement. Um, you know, so then going into state, we had all this awesome momentum that, you know, and, and then our kids just fed off it. And then when you care, when you qualify eight with an, with an alternate, so nine, you're looking at, I mean, that's, man, that's firepower. That's, you know, with state tournaments, I mean, Jared, you know, you were part of championship teams. It's like, you get numbers down there. Actually, I wasn't. A, I wasn't. Oh, oh, oh really? Second, oh, like a that. third second. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. But still like, all of his brothers were though. All of his baby <laughs> brothers were. Every right, team Troy right. and Corey were on won it. <laughs> wow. Every team, how, but, every but year. Like, how, isn't every that, year. But, but how ironic, right? Like, so it's like, but you, but you navigated through that program and, you know, like, but there was tons of success, right? And it was when you got numbers and you look at the field and you're like, well, maybe we could get some luck, you know, from, 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 from the field, taking out guys that right. maybe shouldn't loop. And then your guys overachieve. Right. Bam. Next thing you know, you're, and the next. you're fourth or you're third. Yeah, or, right. So we, you know, we did, uh, I'm, I, I can't, and I say this very honestly, I, I, I can't express how proud of our community and our program I am because I, I am, uh, I'm just a tough, I, I, I'm very stubborn and kind of set in my vision and my philosophy and I'm not a great communicator when it comes to like, like long-term. So a lot of times things roll up on us and I'm set my ways and our community has, they do a really good job of backing me, even though I can be pretty frustrating. Um, I think as a, as a coach, but I, I think everybody understands my heart's in the right spot. And for the most part, I, I have the best interests of our program. Um, you know, at my, at heart. So now I, I'm, I am just so grateful to be 
where I'm at and just I just love Perrysburg and I love our kids and our family and it's just you know like this right now being able to do this with you guys and be able to talk about Perrysburg um is what uh for me it's what it's truly about you know what I'm saying guys right right I mean you need your hard work you know, you put all those long hours in and then you see it paying off right and then you got coach of the year right this year too right yeah so yeah so um yeah it was uh it's the um it's the it's the district north yeah. northwest northwest district right but um, know, people see that, yeah right. so Congrats. which is which is super cool because mm -hmm. um you know obviously your 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 natural human nature is like you want to get you know like approval right like mm -hmm. okay it's good that people are noticing that you're doing stuff right um but it's also an extension of our other coaches and our in our team, you know, like it, it's not just me, it's everybody, but mm -hmm. you know, I, my name is just, I'm that coach. Right. So mm -hmm. that's just kind of how that works. So yeah, you know, selfishly, it's cool to be honored, but you know, equally it's awesome for our, our community, our program mm -hmm. to get that acknowledgement. You know what I mean? And any kind of a momentum like that is important to keep building off of, you know what I mean? So you know, our kids, we, we took 15 kids down to Steber in Colin Moore's camp, which was awesome. We're taking a ton of guys to the UWW, um, 15U in cadet world team and Pan American trials this weekend with some younger kids sprinkled in there, the future division. I mean, shoot, we're doing it right. We're, we're, we're moving in the right direction. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's awesome, man. You guys are definitely community when you, you think of uh, a program you know you, you see the people involved with it and that it starts with you but there's so many people involved and it's it's pretty cool to see yeah it's it's really cool to see it pay off so yeah yeah, yeah I'm, I'm lucky man it, Guys, it's such like, a crazy year right such a crazy yeah year. yeah right right like the, you know the the um yeah just the the dynamic of our country you know the pandemic um sports and the, the, the challenges that everybody's had to face, right. You know, you and you and Zeb and just, it's like, gosh, professionally um, for people to stick together and, and stay confident that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That we're going to be able to do what we want to do. You know, it just says a lot about, you know, wrestling people, I think in general, you know, and I mean, everybody, you know, other sports and people that competed, got their seasons in, um, just a lot of people, man, really worked a lot, of, really hard across the country, you know? So yeah, it's like just being able to do podcasts and talk about stuff and continue positive momentum, you know, during a year that has been, you know, somewhat negative, super important to do. Was Joey Blaze your first state champ as the head coach at Perrysburg? Oh man. Um, I, yeah, I think I don't, I, I'm just so bad, dude. I should know. I, I, I don't know if I was the head coach when Moises won. I don't, uh, I may have been, might have been my first year. No, no, I was not uh, assistant. Okay. So yes. So under, so jo Jody just told me that I was not. So, um, thanks Jody. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, honey. Uh, appreciate you. <laughs> so, oh man. Um, isn't it so good? I love it. I don't even care. I love it. It's so awesome. That's the best um, part of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm so blessed to have her as a wife. She's the best. Um, so, yeah. So, Joe was my first individual under my tenure. Um, so, yeah. And he did, I mean, phenomenal, right? Just uh, what he, how, he, how he wrestled, how he navigated the tournament. Um, had a, had a, he had a really challenging year. I, I was really hands on with him. I wrestled with him quite a bit. I drilled with him on Fridays, um, pushed him really hard. Um, I mean, really hard. So, I mean, I think Joey was really confident when he wrestled, you know, when, when one of our coaches said, Hey, you know, you've, you've, you've dealt with, you know, coach Scotty all year and you can handle a high school guy just go and wrestle. I think he was fully prepared. Um, but that trickled down because all, because then Joey affected the guys that he wrestled. And, you know, that I periodically would grab 
you know, a guy here and there. And so we had this great trickle effect, right? We had to be, we had to be really cautious. You know, you're, we didn't do a ton of cross training with partners just because of COVID. We had to be able to track what guys are wrestling who, but um, we developed a really good system of, we, we paired up early the guys that needed to be training with each other. And we, we were lucky. They all, it, their little mini pods and groupings worked out. Everybody got pushed. So we were super fortunate, um, you know, in that regards, but yeah, you know, Joey was, um, he became a silent leader just with momentum through the season, you know, uh, you know, obviously he went undefeated. So he was just very consistent with his work ethic, his approach. And, you know, when you're winning and you're consistently winning, people tend to follow that, that direction. So he kind of became a silent extension of our coaching staff because he's very smart too with his wrestling, um, his breakdown of wrestling, his understanding of wrestling. So he was able to help his teammates. Um, and Noah Ewan's another one that could sit back and watch uh, his teammates and be able to make adjustments and help kids out. So we were super lucky, man. I had a, we have really good kids in Perrysburg, man. I, we don't, we don't have to deal with uh, very much trouble, you know, kids getting in trouble. Um, you know what I mean? We, we got awesome families, man. So I'm super fortunate. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, okay. So the, the, I guess the big one is you had, so Perrysburg had, did you have five state placers? Four. Four, four. placers. Everybody took, Wait, you had a guy take Pod. first, third, first, third, fifth, seventh. Is that yes. all your placements? Yeah. Yeah, everybody will won their last match. Won their last match. Win the last match, right? That's a great way to end up, right? Dude, it's and it's old school. It's like, dude, I remember being I remember being young and my, my dad being like, no matter what happens, man, win your last match. Win the last match. It's and it, and it just it has so much more meaning to it. When you're able to talk to your kids about why, when you when you expand on what it means and how it can build momentum for just your team in the in the short term, but then long term, build, you build momentum. Um, you know, it's just like you feel better. You might not be happy that you got third or fifth or seventh, but something about when you win your last match, you get your hand raised, and you leave somewhere on a victory on a victory note it just helps so um and then it's tough for your guys that struggled and you know suffered defeat you know like in the blood round and or whatever and then you just you got to build those guys up but yeah man it was really cool after it happened i didn't even catch it at first i was just like people were talking about it i actually did an interview with like a paper or somebody and they were like all odds, all odds. And I was like, uh, oh, yeah. I was I like, so. oh, you're right. You're right. I was like, that's awesome. And then, obviously, yeah, winning all your last matches is huge. And, you know, um, this is good. It's cool. Yeah, we got – hopefully our kids are hungry. You know what I mean? You want to keep winning it, keep adding to the tradition, you know, that's been created over the course of, you know, 30 years, however, you know, however, Perrysburg's been relevant. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you got division one has, has been the battle for the runner up, right? Is Maslin Perry the last team to win it in 2014 besides that? I think they were. I th so, so, yeah. So, so, so yeah, the reason so, why I kind of like, I'm, I'm really like, you know, I, I was like, hey, that's my wife. If I was the coach, when, when I, I, our Perrysburg, we were we were state the state runner up the year Maslin Perry won. So in fourteen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Four, fifth was it fourteen Four, or fifteen? I thought it was fifteen, but I think it was a fifteen. Better than me too. <laughs> I, I, I think, it was fourteen I think or fifteen. It was fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. So I think you guys were runner up in fifteen. And Perry won the duels that year too, right? Yeah, I think Perry won everything that yeah, year. They were dude. They had four champs. They they were good, dude. Yeah, they had seven guys in the finals. Yeah, four champs. So yeah. here's the wild. Okay, so what do you got to do to catch Maslin, Perry, Wadsworth, Kaufman? You know, what do you got to do to catch St. Edward, a 
Hilaria. You got all these teams in Division One LaSalle. What do you got to do to catch all these really good D1 teams? I mean, Northeast Ohio is obviously loaded with them. You know, just the three I just mentioned, or the four I mentioned, Northeast Ohio teams, obviously. Maslin Perry, Brexville, Wadsworth, Elyria. In, in um, D1, Solon's back on the rise. And then obviously Central Ohio, Kaufman dominated Central Ohio. And then you got the St. Edward Eagles, of course, they're the Kings. Um, you guys, Oregon Clay and um, LaSalle down in Cincinnati. What do you guys got to do to catch those teams or remain, if you beat some of those teams this year, what do you got to do to remain ahead of them and or catch them? So, yeah, that answer is pretty easy, man. Got to keep believing and uh, wrestle a lot. You know, it just comes down to believing. Um, and not to discredit, um, you know, anybody. Hi, Gray. Not to discredit anybody, you know, or anything, because obviously, like, uh, you know, saying ads is saying ads. And, I mean, uh, it's like they're going to keep doing what they do. And, you know, Elyria's and Watt and Brexville's, and they're going to keep doing what they're going to do. What helps when you have your youth program, when you have a son, you know, my son's been in our youth program, um, is I've been able to watch. And um, you're able to kind of, um, you're able to almost project what's coming down the pipeline. And for people to beat, you know, to, to, to take out, St. Ed's, Maslin, Barry, Wadsworth. Um, it's going to take a ton of belief. It's going to take a ton of work. It's going to take everybody being on the same page and moving in the same direction. And there can't be one doubter. Can't have one doubter. And if you have people doubting it, they got to get out. Um, and I don't mean that like, like just how it's got to be. Um, Cause if you don't truly believe in your, in your core and your gut, that you can beat those teams and you could win one day, um, then it'll never happen. Um, and I, I truly feel in my, in my heart that with – we're not the largest bitty program. Some programs and, you know, other junior high clubs and entities are a little bigger. But, you know, you got to remember, man, 150 kids don't wrestle. Um, it's 14 guys. So, you know what I mean? It's you put out your guys and you coach your guys up and you teach them and um, you mold them. And then, you know, obviously you, there's, you know, you make your own luck. Um, you just work really hard and you just do your best and you see what happens. Um, and it's like, you know, you, you, you just got to just believe you're going to do it. And that's just kind of where I'm at as a coach. I just believe that, you know, as a community, we're going to continue to strive to win a championship, you know, become, you know, nationally ranked and win a state championship and then win again and then just keep doing it until, you know, your, your time, my time personally in this program is over. Um, you know what I mean? So it's going to be hard, and it, but, but that's the awesome challenge. That's what's so cool about I've witnessed the Maslin Perry thing. I witnessed the Wadsworth thing. Um, I witnessed Troy Christian kind of pop up and do their thing, right? I, I, I mean, I've been able to see stuff. You know, I, I coming up, Graham, I remember when they, when they weren't the best team in Division Two. You know, um, we, you guys, we all saw that. So it's not like, it's not like it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, we just got to just do our best every day, continue to build momentum off of, off of uh, off-season training and doing stuff together. Um, you know, I really preach family and, and being tight-knit in our community and really staying close together so we're willing to fight for one another. And then, uh, yeah, you just you just – See how the how the when the dust settles where you're at, you know what I mean. You mentioned family with with great guy, and obviously, you know, Eric, your brother at Elyria. What uh, and you guys, you know, obviously run a very successful club here. 
in Ohio. What what's the differences between you and Eric? Um, so well, Eric, uh well, if for just to be well, if I was to be really candid, I, you know, my brother is he is very um I, I want to I want to use the correct terminology. He's 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 more he's more calculated and, and has a little more natural patience than me. I think I think his coaching, I think where he is because he's ten years older than me. It's really cool because I learn I get to learn from him ten years back, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, and what's nice is, you know. W- you know, we talk and it's not that we're, we're, we're no, we're not close, but we're not the closest brothers on the planet. Right. So we kind of have this really cool thing where when we come together, um, there's collaboration, but it's more, you know, we're, we're brothers, we're friends, we're coworkers. We coach together. Our feng shui, as far as that goes, is tremendous. Um, you know, I think, like I said, he's, he's, he's a little more, um, patient. He's, he's calculated. I think his approach is a little more, um, uh, broken down where I'm a little more, um, kind of spur of the moment. Um, I think I'm a, a little more, um, kind of just like physical, like in the moment. Right. Um, not, not that he's not fiery, but I, mm-hmm. I'm just being young. I think I'm just in that place now where I'm a little more knee jerk. Yeah. And yes. Yeah. It's a great word. A little more knee jerk. Um, immediate. I'm, I'm very, I'm very immediate. Um, and that has its pros and cons. Um, right. But like I said, I think he's a little more, he's a little more organized than me. Um, but I think, Eric and I have done a really good job of finding and utilizing the people that are closest to us and understanding the strengths and weaknesses that we have and getting people involved and allowing the people that are closest to us to do what they're good, good at, you know what I mean? As far as our assistant coaches, that's what a good coaches do, right? And you guys ever see great coaches. Well, well, we're trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? And I'm Mm. humbly speaking. I don't know if, I don't, I don't know if I'm great. Um, I, I, I think I, I was fortunate to wrestle and grow up in wrestling and I'm a student of the sport. I, you know, I take back from my college experiences, my mistakes I made when I was pretty good, when I sucked, um, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to evolve as far as coaching my son still make tons of mistakes there. Um, you know, I just try to learn from my mistakes and try to correct them faster. Uh, you know, obviously I, and I think one thing that I'll give my brother a lot of credit for too. And I think, I think with time I'll gain this more. Um, Eric is totally, he's totally for his kids, meaning like he's very good at checking himself at the door where I still maybe interject myself into, into equations, you know, you understand what I'm saying with that? hundred percent, hundred percent, you know, just kind of fighting ego and pride. Um, and I think with time I'll get better at that. Um, I think that's what, that's the true measure of, I think if I'm ever considered a great coach, to be honest with you, Jared, it'll be when I fully concede to, It is about the kids, the program, their growth, their needs, and me being able to check myself at the door all the time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still kind of in that stage where I'm. Well, we're all learning as coaches still, right? I mean, we're all. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of battle the, you know, my, um, what am I trying to say? Like my, uh, your conscience, you battle yourself mm-hmm. a lot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and as soon as I fully can, can take myself out of the way, man, I think we're going to have some really cool things happen. You know what I mean? But we're figuring it out. Right. 
I'm figuring it out. My brother's a, my brother is, I am, I don't get to tell him this a lot, but I am, I'm grateful that he's my brother. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of everything that he's done in his time in Illyria. Um, you know, I, I've always looked up to him. He's a tremendous man. Um, so if I could ever be honestly half the coach as that guy, then, um, then I'll have done something. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm, he's just an awesome dude, man. He's truly salt of the earth. He's one of the greatest human beings that's walked the planet. And um, the sport of wrestling is a better thing because Eric Burnett's been involved with the sport. They don't make them better than him. There's, there's no question. And I don't think that there's a person out there that's really going to argue with you about that. Like, just listen to hear John Heffernan talk about him is like, I'm like, wow, he really respects this guy. He really respects yeah. Eric. And, you know, like what Eric's done really well is he's got obviously the super high end guys. Obviously, your nephew, Mickey, he's got Nate one more year. But he built his team around, you know, Ben Darmstadt, Kevin Vo. You know, he made runs. He was a runner-up with those two guys, right, being champs. And, um, you know, he's done a really good job with the Mitchiff brothers. And then he had Piecraft. And he's just done a really good job of always having a really high-level guy. Always just having a really high level guy. And there's always a guy that's, you know, the Agners that I think they all came through there. Felton, they had a bunch of Felton, they had a couple Felton brothers. He's always found like tapped into families. Seems like he's really good at that. You know what I mean? Like always having brothers. And that's, that's the sport, right? You got the Burnett, you got the Oppers, and then you got the Millers. It's, I mean, we're, we're all a part of a family of wrestling, right? But he's done really good at that. And he's always got, Super high level guys. He's always got nationally ranked guys. Do you feel like you're now in that position with Joey Blaze? His brother Marcus is coming in. Um, you got Chavez as a state placer coming back, I think. Yep. And then yep. Who else little is coming a, back? Little Ryan Avalos, our six pounder. Ryan La Avalos is a state placer for you. You lose Gary. The, the, Dinkins, the Dinkins brothers. You got the Dinkins they're, brothers, they're but you've, you've got like a really good core of guys. And then you've got like this, like only 14 get the wrestle, but dude, you're, you're 10 through 28 are all pretty comparable. And they're all two and two at the district tournament to two and two at the state tournament. They're all like that, that type of guy. You have a 10 through 28. I'm saying you got 18 guys in your depth like that right now. When I see it at camp, I'm like, wow, he's really building depth. How do you build the depth like that? off of those really good guys, those high level guys that are coming back. How do you build the depth how you have? Well, um, I don't know if I have a, a, the right answer. I just know what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have kids leech onto each other. So um, over the years, like I, like I said, I'd be the type of guy to be like, we only have five kids at this camp. What the hell, man? I need 10 here. You know what I mean? And then you get eight and I'm like, man, I need 12 here. Then you get 10 and I'm like, I need 15. And if you get the kids leeching on to the, to one another and they start dragging each other along, the next thing you get, I will say this. Now we're, we're at this point where I think when I say, Hey guys, we got this camp opportunity. I want everybody to go. Dudes really consider it where I think three or four years ago, Dudes that have been like, ah, yeah, well, what, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, kids weren't willing to really take themselves out of their comfort zone to understand the process of getting better at wrestling. So we're, for me, I think to build depth, obviously your guys do stuff together. They, they leech onto one another. And the, as the better your good guys get, then you're, you're, mid-level guys start to improve and then your mid-level guys will start bringing your your newer kids or your kids that just they're just not that good yet they they're uncoordinated they can't walk at you gum at the same time but they got hard or they're clumsy all those kids now everybody's improving some at different rates as the others 
And then, like you said, you get a guy bust through and win a state championship. Kids see that work ethic and they're like, well, if I do a little more, I could possibly see breakthrough, right? And so we're, we're starting to get that. Like you said, to, another thing about Eric was not only did he always have the ability to coach a, an elite guy up, right, to elite levels, but there was always some dude on those teams that showed out, a dude that, like his six-pounder this year. Dude, I, that dude's my brother, and I know Elyria, and I'm like, they rolled into districts, and I was like, who is that dude? I he had a like, 500 record, I think, didn't he? Uh, dude, I was like, who is that red-headed dude with the freckles? I was like, <laughs> I swear, dude, I'm like, what in the? Dude, he's out there <laughs> like just honey badger wolverine in it. I'm like, where did the and the dude made it to state? <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, wow. And a dude, testament to the kid, because Eric was like, dude has been scrappy all year. Dude has been scrappy all year. And it's like that Illyria thing, man. That that some dude just buys in. You know, some kid that, and I'm not saying this kid has this type of life, but there's some kid that has maybe t- a tough home life, whatever, just an Illyria kid that has it t- rough and just buys into the sport, the team, just wrestles real hard and then ends up, you know, like winning matches and then making it to state. Um, you know what I mean? And it's just like, to me, what's uh, what's super cool about Eric is he's real blue collar. He's, he's a Lyria, like through and through. I mean, that dude will bleed black and red until the day he dies, you know? And, uh, you know, I think he had opportunities over the years to maybe go to different situations. I think, you know, like really good coaches, he was recruited and places wanted to hire him. And, you know, he, uh, he said, no, I'm good. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, that's a, a testament to him. You know what I mean? Uh, it's also the type of dude he is, man. He's never, he built Elyria, dude. When he took Elyria over, they were bad. Um, they were pretty, they were really bad. And where he's taking them, uh, it's pretty, pretty phenomenal. You know what I mean? I kind of lost track of what we were talking about, but. Yeah, but okay. So, <laughs> I mean, you were just, I was just asking you about how he basically was able to get guys to jump levels and, you know, you built it around families and now you've got the blaze brothers and you've got Dinkins coming back and you got to have a lot of Chavez right. and you got all those yeah. guys. But the biggest thing I've noticed is obviously you guys, you and him both get relationships. You understand that this is like, it's a relationship game. Coaching is recruiting is getting guys out of the hallways, getting them to an elite level. It, it's, it's a really important thing. Your old man obviously was old school as it gets like if you want to talk blue collar if we could put the definition of blue collar i think they put tom miller and ron burnett in the dictionary of their pictures yeah yeah no doubt you ain't lying where do you yeah. think that um you you know those guys are obviously the two i just named your dad my dad but you know ed upper ed upper's worn out a bunch of joints too he's pretty blue collar but you look at yeah. these blue collar yeah. guys they understand relationships. All three of our dads understand personal relationships and getting people to work for you. Where do you think that comes from? Oh, uh, well, I think for me, um, I, I just think about you have to, and this is another area that I'm, to be brutally honest, I'm not that good at yet, but I'm getting better. You have to get to know the kids more of an individual basis and then understand them as a person and not as a wrestler um and for me that can be tough because you're always you're always thinking wrestling you know you're you're at a practice or you're you know so to be able to detach and be like okay how is how is aj Parrish is one of my kids how is AJ Paris doing as a human being? You know what I mean? How, what's going on with AJ? How, how is he doing in life? Where are things going? How does our school, how's his social life? How's his family life? What, where is he at as far as like, what's he think about wrestling? You know what I mean? I, 
I'm starting to really understand that kind of the back end part of coaching. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I, I think that's just time. You know what I mean? It just, you just takes time to be able to get to know your kids, to be able to focus on getting able to know your kids from more of a, uh, not a, not a necessarily a wrestling perspective, but from like a student perspective and just a, just an average kid, you know, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've been kind of telling myself, you got to almost think about them at points like they're like average regular kids, like just some kid that you've come across and you've met and, you know, how can you better their life? How can you mentor them outside of the sport of wrestling? And I think, you know, one really awesome thing about our staff is our coaches really do a good job of that on different levels in their own way. And I think that's why we've been able to kind of do things the way that we have, because we have different individual individuals mentoring these kids coming from different perspectives. And then you got your good cop, bad cop, and then your understanding person. And, you know, maybe like the person that's like, Hey, you got to understand where this guy's coming from, put yourself. So we have a really good deal, man. I think that's, that's pretty, pretty key, you know? And then when you're able to get, you're obviously going to be closer to some kids than others. Um, but when you're able to identify that and you're okay with that, then you could start to kind of break down barriers. You know, I got dudes on my team that are, that I still don't know a ton about, but I'm starting to understand them um, in ways outside of wrestling. So I think once you, once you kind of figure that out from a coaching perspective, then you know how to begin to motivate them when it comes to their wrestling, you know, and then obviously you'll watch them compete, you watch them practice, you watch how they handle conditioning, you watch how they handle when they get into a scrap in the practice room, you watch how they happen, you, you watch what happens when, uh, when the kids are just the, with themselves and they're kind of busting, you know, you know, they're, they're cracking on each other, they're interacting, you watch how that stuff shakes out you watch your team dynamic and then you just kind of learn by observing about your kids. You know, I, that's just kind of what I do. Um, you know what I mean? And I think every coach is different. I think the, the legendary coaches though, they, 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 they know how to figure their guys out to where they can get the most out of their kids and continue to make them better. And not just like, like just ring them out and get everything out of them. And then you let them go. But, get them to peak through high school. And then if they want to wrestle next level, they still love the sport and they still have a lot to give. You know what I mean? No. Yeah. I mean, I just, it's amazing to me just figure out learning, learning people, learning relationships, learning their tells learning. It's like, you're almost playing poker with them. You know what I mean? You're like trying to figure out, you're trying to get them to tip their hat so you can figure out what makes them go. Right. Like, yeah what motivates this kid that doesn't motivate that kid, what this kid cares about. You know, some people care about, you know, um, constant gratification from their coaching staff. Some kids just don't care and want to win and they'll do whatever it takes to win. And some kids are sensitive about social media. Some kids don't care at all, but it's just like, it seems like you guys are set up to make a run. Mm -hmm. You're set up to make a run. It feels like you've got the horses and you're set up to make a run at Perry's. Got the support. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, you know, like I said, we, you know, we just got to keep, we got to keep working hard. And I think our kids, they're going to create, how do I want to say our kids are going to create something special for themselves and us coaches are going to be along for the ride. You know what I mean? We just got to just, we got to just keep them. uh, The analogy I'd use the other day, I went through this car wash by my house it's one of those automated ones when you pull in, there's like these guides where your, your, your left tire, the driver's side tires go into this rail and then you put it in neutral and it pulls you through the car wash. Mm-hmm. Right. We did. We just got to be the rails. Right. And, and then, and then we just got to just guide the vehicle forward and then, um, you know, to see how it goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got you have kids, the vehicles, man. right? <laughs> yeah. We got kit. I mean, we got kids that are starting to really love wrestling. They, they're very dynamic. You know, you got to have some, 
you got to have some strength, some feel, some awareness. They're starting to get aware. They're starting to get math savvy. Um, you know, when you're, and then you add belief and consistent focus and conditioning and the love of the sport and gratitude and, you know, really, really cool things can happen. You know what I mean? So, you know, I hope it happens for us. You know, we'll see what we're going to give it hell. You know, we're going to do our best. You know what I mean? And uh, you'll see how it goes, right? So we are on the Barbarian Hour, right? What's your favorite gear from Barbarian? I, so, I, I saw you rocking that G.I. Joe. Right? That's one of my favorites. I still don't have that one. The G.I. Oh, Joe font one. You're rocking that, I think, at, at uh, Boise State. I'm like, oh, oh so yeah, yeah, the, the, So I like the – so, dude, I all the stuff is really comfortable. Um, the mm-hmm. T-shirts are super comfy. The I like the sweatshirts. They're the, the, How they're made, they're made out of like this – the hoodies are like a different material. They're like thick. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I like my sweatshirts a little bit bigger. They just fit really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like the hoodies. Um, the t-shirts are cool. Um, I got a pair of shorts that are pretty sweet that I rock in the summer. Those, short, those like new a, shorts are like, uh, what is it? Zeb's good with the words. Got a cell phone Gus, gusseted. Yeah. What are they? And the crotch is gusseted. Those are Yeah, shorts. it's like where it's All stretchy. Right. It's stretchy. Yeah. Yeah. Gusset, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Gusset, I wore yeah, those, are, those for the first time last a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, wow, these are nice. Yeah. They're dude. Those are, uh, that stuff, man, they, they are doing a really good job. Mm-hmm. I, uh, we've gotten singlets from them that were just awesome. Um, cause no, you were with them. Perrysburg was with them and not now you're back with them. So obviously. Yeah. You, yeah. Do you, they, you see what they do. Right we yeah we uh we've had really really good luck with them you know what i mean as far as um uh gosh what am i getting stuff and not you know i don't think we've ever really and i could be wrong i don't think we've ever had any major mistakes or i they i mean it just that company um they're trending in the right direction and i think our kids um so when, you know, it's kind of a joke, Joe, when you get a state champ, so kids have been like over the course of the years, dude, can we get a, we want to get the single, we want a Nike single white one with the tr- on the trim and the flam and the glim flam. And I'm like, all right, here's what we're going to do. I'm like, get together. Listen, this is great. I grabbed our kids and I go, all right, hey, listen, you guys can get whatever single you want. Get together. All right. Talk about the style. And whatever you then send the state champ over to me and we'll make a decision. And they'll be like, that ain't cool, man. <laughs> Cause we've never had a state champ. There's no state, you know, I mean, they're like, that ain't cool, man. So I'm like, yeah, well, whatever, man, don't worry about it. Look good, feel good, wrestle good. And I'm like, yeah, man, just start winning. So does Blazer get to pick a sweet singlet is what you're saying so, now? So dude. Yeah. So he was like, Hey, Hey. And I was like, what? He's like, guess what? And I'm like, what? He's like, I get to make a singlet. And I was like, oh, I was like, yeah. I was like you do. Mm-hmm. So he, you know, we've been, collab- you know, like we'll talk to the kids and you know, then they'll communicate and then Joey will be like, hey, here's what we've, you know, out in a note, create, you know, and what we'll do is we'll, the code. You realize we'll, you just tell Josh what you want and he designs it. Yes. It's yeah, amazing, I, actually. No, no, dude. It's that's what I was getting to like. We I'm I'm like I'm kind of traditional. I like the 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 kind of traditional, kind of like plain, right? You know, a little bit of stuff, but right. I still kind of like plain, like let's let's scrap and people remember it. So uh yeah, Joey was kind of like, yeah, I kind of got this idea for this plain look, and I kind of want, and uh, so you know, we'll see. And Josh, like I said, he'll just be like, you just tell him exactly what you want, and he sends you a picture, and you're like, whoa, that's gonna look cool, or ooh, yeah, not what I pictured, you know what I mean? But hey, do you think that anyone will ever have as plain and cool of a single as when Eric won four state titles with a big zero on his chest? So, dude, have you ever heard of so Blake? Blake Saito, right? Who who was at Olentangy, Liberty, right? Yeah. 
Russell for Marinelli, mm -hmm. who Eric and Marinelli at battles right at state high school. He was telling what, me a what story year did that, they wrestle? 85. So, 85. Yeah. Did they wrestle two two years though at state? I think they wrestled. Yeah, they twice. wrestled two years. Eric and I talked eighty four and eighty five. Like what year? Yeah, because sophomore. Marinelli won in eighty six. I'll be right back. I gotta grab something. I, I just remembered I had. You guys go keep grab talking. it. Go grab okay. it. So eighty five, eighty six, because Eric beat him in the quarters once, and he beat him in the semifinals. Or well, he beat him in the finals one time. He beat him in the quarters and the in the finals once, right? I think so. I think so. I think that's what happened. But like, I mean, just amazing matches, right? Like ultimate competitors. Well, yeah, it was really funny that um, Coach Marinelli had shared with Blake back then his dad, Marinelli's dad, referred to Eric as Super O. <laughs> 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 He's like, uh, got to go through Super O. We got to beat Super O. You know, Super which is, O, which EB Dub. Is, you know, which is Air super cool, right? Super like, o. But, but dude, like that would be a cool, like if I was, let's say Overland had, if I was coaching at Overland, I'd be like, Josh, I want a bl dark blue singlet with a white block O and red and white striped on the sides. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so, those singlets were loose. I remember so, they were like the loose. Legs were all like, the legs were all like, like they look like little third world Russian kids. Yeah, like, like, like the Russian like, national like, dude. Like these? Whoa, do you, brutes. Do you know who these are? Whose are those? These are your brother, Eric Burnett's freshman state final shoes. No, no way. way. Yes. Dude. I was, I was trying to put together for OEC to have like a corner. I had like I have Colin Palmer singlet from junior high state for leaps shoes. And I was like, Eric, you got anything cool? He's like, I actually have a freshman year and I haven't had a chance to put like a display together. Look at these. Look Dude, at these. those are amazing. Dude. Those are the yeah, other brute. They say yeah. brute on them. Yeah. Kind so of. I need to make wow. a display. I got to I got a box to put them in. And I got to like do it upright. You know, you just can't yeah, yeah, right. throw it together. You know what I mean? But I want to put a display like that's amazing. Dude, yeah, are, I got these. I'll get them to you. You know what I mean? Like, Colin sent me some stuff, but that's so, super cool. <laughs> so you guys are talking about. I missed <laughs> yeah. the singlet part, but was it baggy yeah. on them or what was it? Yeah, yes. well, just it was that weird. But what, what, what was what's that material? It's like cotton, yeah, yeah like cotton. polyester, like gold polyester. Right? Yes, polyester, where it would like polyester, it'd stretch like out, you'd have to wash yeah. it. And it would shrink yeah. up and it'd be tight. Then you you wear it for a tournament. We had like, Josh would know. We can ask Josh. You got to crisscross the straps over. <laughs> <laughs> Stra the straps like hanging up. There wasn't like, lycra. Hey. Yeah, you go out of bounds and you're like. Uh, lycra up. was like, the best though when it went from the old stuff to spandex? lycra, right? Yeah, spandex, right? I mean, it's what they are now. Yeah. yeah. When we were in high school, that's when that like lycra came in. It was real comfy. It was all slippery. Yeah. Yeah. I wore a year at Oak Harbor. I wore a year of not lycra singlets in junior uh -huh. high. We did not have lycra singlets. You had the, uh -huh. you had the polyester, like you can light a match. Yeah. Off, like it yeah, <laughs> like gave my skin like a crazy rash. Cause I had horrible like... skin. It sucked. It was the worst. <laughs> it was, it was the all worst. baggy in the armpits. You'd be all like, yeah. you couldn't do the, you know, the thing the kids do where they roll their straps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you did that, thing. it'd fall off. You'd be like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coach done. had to tape, tape the back of it together. Dude, yes. I remember when dudes yeah, like tape do the that. back. Yeah, yes. they tape the back together. Yes. yes. God, wow. it is crazy. Oh, oh man. man, so cool. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot I had the shoes. Like we we're dude, gonna those do are it. Cool, and, dude. And COVID hit. You know, we were gonna do this like display, like old throwback stuff and um and then covid hit i was like oh i got your shoes so. dude you got yeah it's gonna be cool man whatever you guys put together is gonna be awesome yeah we got you guys do a you guys do a kick butt job man yeah we got the hey scooter you got any good ron burnett stories beating your brother up or anything like that you want to share <laughs> <laughs> you, dude, you missed I, a you know what's weird go go ahead go ahead zeb told a story about with Jody about, about Ferd uh, getting punched by old time. But <laughs> <Dude, so I'm laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> you can see I it, right? Love, I just, yeah. Hey, what's going on in there? <laughs> 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 oh, oh T Bone is hanging out. Through the screen, oh. the winner. Yeah. Yeah. The winner. Hey, oh, oh. hey, tell the story 
about when Tate hit my dad with the truck. Oh, yeah. So this is a good one. I don't know if I'll do it justice like this. You but... can stand up, though. You can stand yeah, up. Yeah, and well, no, that. it's, yeah. I mean, like, so, okay, so we were at, um, we were at Zeb's mom and dad's house, and we were, I don't know what we were doing, but we were tooling around in the truck, and Tom, would, they have this long lane at their house. It goes all the way back to the woods, and there's piles of, like, iron and steel and a bunch of stuff that I take your dad probably brought from like, he's been stealing that off job sites for 50 years, but go ahead. Whatever. Right. Like shit left over. Yes. Got made its way to his house. Right. Yes. There you go. So Tate and I are in the truck driving down the lane and Tom is down the lane and he's on, he's on my, the, the, the piles are on my side, the passenger Passenger side, side. right side. Passing We're yourself. driving towards him and he's pulling out stuff to throw in the back of the truck because he must have had an idea of a project or something he's going to do back at the barn. So we're driving up and Tate's like all hunched over with his hand on his steering wheel and he's like got his arm out the window and he's like, hey, watch this. I'm going to get real close to him and scare him. And I'm, so I'm like, oh, okay. All right. So as we roll up, we get to be about 50 feet away from him. We're going about five miles an hour. And it's 40 feet. And I look out the, so the, the window's like right here. I look out the window and I'm looking at the, the mirror, the side mirror, and the truck is lined up with Tom. <laughs> and Tom's pulling out this beam and he's like this. And he just turns and he just freezes. And the truck just hits him. <laughs> spins him around he rolls into the bed and i'm like oh jesus and tate's like shit he hits a brakes. <laughs> so tom gets up falls down to his knee gets up and he he moves over and he's just barking he's like in the truck and i'm like oh my god he unleashes a a, a tirade of swear words it was like <laughs> On the Christmas story, when the guy was like, "Fuck it, flizzing bad for it. like, you know, like uh, Griswold's vacation when Chevy yes. Chase is like, "God damn it!" And the, the I, I was like, "Oh my god!" So he opens up the truck door, he slides in. I'm in the middle, and Tate's like, <laughs> Tate's like driving. He's up against the thing, cause dude, Tom's grabbing him and he's like roughing him up and he's punching. Him. And I'm like, "Oh my god!" And I so we get up to the thing and he's like, gets out. And I, I look at his elbow, and there's a piece of steel, a sliver, the size of a pencil, sticking out three uh, inches out of his forearm, uh, like this, sticking out like that, and bleed just dripping. And he ain't even, not even looking at it. Just uh, he puts a towel over his head, <laughs> sits in a lawn chair, shirt unbuttoned. Sandy's like, Tom, you want, you want some lemonade? You want some guys tea? You want some lemonade? She brings him out some lemonade and he sits and it never acknowledges the steel sliver sticking out of his arm. <laughs> this big, four inches sticking out, <laughs> dripping under the skin. Four inches <laughs> under, the, it was an eight inch long sliver. And I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, that is the toughest. I'm like, that guy was the, I'm like, that guy is the epitome of a Neanderthal caveman, hard ass guy. Like, I'm like, <laughs> That's the hands down the toughest individual. I'm like, how is he not fl-? like, oh my God, my damn. My-. And I think your dude, I think your mom like poured like whiskey on it and he bit a spoon <laughs> and just ripped it out. Like I think I think she was like, okay, hold on. She like <laughs> just went, he was like, ah, pulled it out and put like a hot branding iron on it and <laughs> cauterized it. I don't oh even know how he got it all. Uh, then hey, what I happened? This. Then what we happened? Went, then what uh, happened? So then Tate got all sad and he like meandered up in the rafters and he ordered a pizza that got dropped off at the barn and he ate a medium pizza up on a rafter crying with his feet dangling down. And your dad just berated him. I stood awkwardly for 35 minutes in the shop. While your dad yelled at Tate up in the, and Tate ate a pizza. And I was like, damn, I'm kind of hungry, but I don't want to say anything. 
Tom was pissed with a towel around his head. I'm like, dude, this is crazy. How about when we wrecked on the jet ski? Uh, <laughs> on the jet ski. <laughs> dude, uh, oh my that was, gosh. That was so great. Uh, that was fun. That was we fun. triple we triple tandemed on a jet ski. That was on the back, right? Why yes. would we put me on the back? Jared was the pilot. I was, I was in the middle because I was I afraid. I was only yeah, I've never drove it with three people on. <laughs> we were but going think, 60. Yeah, you were I mean, you were the owner of the I think you it was just like owner, navigate, put but yeah, dude, we know. started doing this. We caught that weight coming up oh, that corner. We were because it was like smooth sailing and then that dude, we, we're, we're going you know, 55. <laughs> Oh, it's 59. Oh, it was 59. Yeah. I know it was 59. It was, yeah. I remember. Yeah. You were right. I was like, oh my God, I love this. And then I said, I knew it was. We came up <laughs> and I think we were like silent, which seemed for like, we were like, and then we were like, yeah. Yeah. Just, I was dead like, man floating. I was dead man floating, knocked yeah. out. You were, Zeb was unconscious. Jared was like in good spirits. I was like, my feet were touching the muck, and I was like, oh, God. <laughs> we were like. <laughs> we were in the Sandusky we were... Bay. Oh, yes. it was gross. But the jet ski was like, we were like 100 yards apart of everything. It was oh. the craziest thing ever. And I'm surprised, so... like, no other boats or nothing came through. You know, because we were in that the channel. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up, and it was like, zap, zap, zap. <laughs> I'm like, what? We I just to... put my feet down and all and that mud. Your like, nose all whistle for like a week. Like, remember your nose? <laughs> yeah, I had that weird, wacky, infamous nostril whistle. It was most like, bizarre. My days. septum was me, myself, and Irene. Yeah, my septum was uh, perforated. <laughs> was it in between a Burnett camp? What was? Where were we at? We in were. Do we were at your house for something? Well, it was between sessions of something, wasn't it? I don't know. No, I think we were just kicking it. I think. Okay. No, I was with Zeb. No. We would do thing. We would do camp. Eric would pay us, and it was like watching the Armageddon movie. Whenever he, whenever they all get paid, they're like, Woo! <laughs> "Come and get a big dog." <laughs> I catch a big, I catch Papa Bear. <laughs> we were like gone, right? We would just like go and get it all weekend, right? <laughs> uh, Dude, yeah. that was the summer that my car was stuck in drive. No, oh, that was the best. <laughs> He best. would start my car and he'd have to have his foot on the brake or it would it would run me over because I had to lay underneath it to put it in gear. My dad made it, made me a shifter so I could reach up in underneath the underneath from I'd lay under the front driver's side tire, and that was how you had to shift it. Yes, that was classic. Oh, oh man. Yeah, Jared, it was it was cool, man. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah. It was the night we went to Knipper's party too. We went to Knipper's party and we uh Yeah, that was a dude, that was a cool We spot. lost Eric Torres. We lost Eric yes. Torres. He too. Yes. yes. He we lost him in Lorraine and he showed up in Kent like three days later. <laughs> We're like, like an old like an old mangy cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, those, he, had, back. he had one of those sticks with a little bag on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like, well. yeah. <laughs> he still lives a lifestyle like that. What do they call that? What's that called? It's got like a name. Satchel. Uh, a stick and bindle, right? A bindle. Yes, yeah, a bindle. Stick and bindle. <laughs> <laughs> that dude had a bindle. <laughs> dude, oh, Torres. Dude, we went to this place one time. And my mom and dad came and picked us up late night. That was, I'm going to tell you right now, that might have been the hardest I ever laughed. Oh, that was a funny night. Daddy was like, he slid into a seat with these girls and started talking to them. We were on the east side of Toledo, right across from St. Charles. We were actually in like on Navarre Avenue in Oregon, Ohio. I think was we were eating. Freeway. Freeway. We were, we were eating. eating and Scotty never ate with us. And he literally had these two east side girls. Laughing for forty five oh, minutes. Torres, you talking about Torres? No, no, Scotty. Scotty, Scotty, oh, sorry, sorry. he sorry. never came and sat down with us. So we, and as a so, result, you know, it's like two thirty to two three in the morning. He never got anything to eat. We got food to eat when we were just literally watching him entertain these two girls for forty five minutes. And then so at the Jared, end of the night, Zeb and I went and hung out, and. Uh, we were went out in um it was actually a real cool area. I don't know what that yeah, place downtown was called. Toledo is a place called uh 
It was on the river, wasn't it? Yeah, they had a place called uh, it wasn't Hazards. It was the Oliver House. But Oliver. I remember it being a pretty cool yeah, spot, right, right? Down, right downtown, like not far from um, like Seagate Center, right by. Yes. But the field and all that stuff wasn't there yet. The baseball field wasn't there yet. Yeah, and then by Owens so, Corning. Yeah, and then we were, you know, you know, we were we made the right call, and uh, Tom and Sandy came into town. And picked us up. Thank you. Yep. And it nice. was cool because Tom came in, came walking in, all pimped out. He had this straw hat on and a Hawaiian shirt. I was like, wow. He had a beer. He was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, nice spot. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, walk yeah. in and say something really funny and unassuming like that. It was funny. Like you like pointed us like, a ride home. You like did this shit like yeah. I- and then we and that's Don't when we camp. yeah and that's when we ended up at that diner that restaurant uh freeway i think it's called yeah dude that's yeah so we were at freeway we used to go to freeway late night and i'll tell you what all kinds come out at freeway it's right across from St. Charles Hospital on Navarre Avenue, like Route 2. Yeah, and I remember it, that. It I remember is, that. It is. So, it, so go there you, at 2 in the morning. I don't know if it's there anymore. You guys will appreciate this just because you guys lived it. I wasn't part of it, but I I don't know where it was. I don't know if it was you shared the pics of you guys, that big group. at. I think it was your family's cottage that was on the lake. Yeah, it was my 21st mm-hmm. birthday party. 21st yeah. Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, that looked like I, I always talk. It's really cool because obviously, you know, Jody, you got right like that. You guys being classmates and friends and it's just always kind of. And then I know you two in my way. Right. But right. it's just always kind of fun because I didn't live that with you. But it's really cool to hear about it. You know what I mean? The, the Yeah. But the next the, summer, think about this. The next summer was this was i mean within i under a year of that we were hanging out think about that within a year of that birthday we were that was when we were doing your brother's camps and going out and being maniacs well you know what's so bizarro too and not even like i like it's really crazy that i was never around you guys and was around jody ever you know what i mean now like even that time you went to kent and you lost my number yeah in that time i remember uh running into you guys i think at put in bay like we weren't there together at put in bay and i think it was when you and jody first started dating because i remember you're like, getting pizza or something off in the corner and i ran into you like, well, like i ran oh, into you dude. three there yeah dude like real like that's a, like dude, didn't even know you guys were that, putting bay and like that's um, a crazy that? story we were just hanging out taking a little weekend together and believe it or not dude this is crazy jody didn't feel good the whole time we were there we get back, and that's when we found out she was pregnant with Gray Guy. No way. No How way. wild is that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so. I just don't feel good for some reason. I, yes. I have the shits. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, are you okay? Uh, She's like, no, we're going to go out. I still feel well. I'm like, oh, we can hang out. She's a trooper. We, I mean, she didn't really drink or anything. She just was like under the weather, but. Uh, she's like half well, she rocked out like like we were everything was normal and um it was really cool man we had a good weekend but That's yeah she wasn't feeling good and then we got home and i think i was like i was like training some kids i had like small groups i was doing at that time and i was training some kids and i met up with her to hang out and she was like well and she told me and i was like hey man it is what it is man we'll rock and roll so that yeah, was pretty – that was – I remember – I dude, I remember seeing you guys. That was good. Wow, you can, that is crazy. I think of the place, but, like, go oh, wow, like, totally random, you dude, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hooked up, and then there was that, like, that one bar that had that – it was, like – it's, like, a house. It's on the, it's on the corner of a street. It's, like, a house, mm-hmm. and there's a really cool outdoor part you could drink outside. Mm-hmm. But then the inside's really nice. Wood. Could house? be. But yeah, maybe – it was cool. And uh yeah, Jody, like there was this group of dude people like next to us and shit popped off. And old Loom Dog was like, 
she like stood up and said some shit and I was like, whoa. And dude, she had these dudes, man. She put these dudes in her place. I was like, damn, this chick don't play. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I love it, dude. I was like, I like it. I love yeah. Awesome. it. Yeah. Hey. So, dude, let's let's talk about your dude. Your little your um your studios are awesome. I dig it. You guys have done a good job. It's really cool. It's really cool to see you guys. This thing coming to fruition with you guys. This barbarian out of the podcast. I mean, not to be cheesy, but I'm proud of you guys. It's really cool, man. Oh, look, well, we thanks, this. man. We're working on uh, that. Dude, it. Yeah. Coaster? I have to get you a coaster, man. I get you a Go Ohio coaster, buddy. Dude, man, those are cool. Yeah, we're, we're setting them up so we can do in-person stuff. So, um, Okay. You know, and uh, get together Ooh, or get whatever. Some of these? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, any, yeah, and anything, listen, and I mean this like I'm putting it out there. But obviously, you know me, I'm not organized. But if there's anything I could do, like, when things are coming up, if we're going to be at the same event, grab me. You know what I mean? I'll, I always want to hang with you guys and talk and just be involved and, you know, whatever, in any right. whatever way. Now, for sure. I'm looking, wanna, I'm know, looking forward to it, the things getting back to normal. And Can you, can you tell <clears throat> the story about Eric cutting the screen? Oh, dude. So, yeah. How about that? Like, in typical – yeah, high school, crazy, like, you know, I'm, I want to hang, breaking the rules. So obviously Eric's 10 years older than me. So when that cat was, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old, I'm six, seven, eight, you know, and I'm summertime and he's sneaking out. So instead of just popping the screen out, he cuts the screen and slides out, you know, like a snake. It runs off in the summer and woo, do, 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 yeah, woo, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and then like comes back. Well, you know, summertime, little Scotty sleeping in little pajama shorts on the bottom bunk, it gets eaten alive by mosquitoes. So I had 30 to 40 mosquito bites on me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Our mom's like, oh my gosh, he's got mumps and measles. I'm like, get itchy. Uh, you know skeeters all over and my dad's like what in the fucking part about cuts the screen out i got i got malaria dysentery uh, you know what i mean uh shoot uh, thanks, but he Lord. was like hey he's like he's tough he'll make it you know he's tough uh, yeah when did he bow and arrow him yeah, and it was like a deal. Like Eric was like, "Yeah, I ain't doing that." And he's like, "Oh, you are." And he was like, "No, I'm not." And he was like, "You are." And I was on the top bunk that night. I was like, "Whoa!" Door was like, Pah. Eric tried to go prop the door, like, Rrr. and Dad came in just <laughs> hydraulic power <laughs> and just grabbed him and just manipulated him into a bow and arrow. <laughs> he's like, "You're going." Eric's like, I know I am. I was like, wow. Oh my, like, whoa. But uh, no, man, that dude. Uh, and I tell you what, Eric would say the same thing, man. Eric had, Eric had obviously a different relationship with our dad, um, being you know the the, the oldest in the family, you know, and being a, a dude, and they got each other obviously differently than my dad and he and I. Right. I was the the youngest, the stubborn little boy that was ornery. And I think he was just like, yeah, this dude's a stubborn little idiot, but obviously loved me. Right. And things worked out good. You know, our, Eric's a good human being. My, our sister is amazing. I'm doing OK. You know what I mean? So but yeah, you, we all got those stories. Right. Like. Remember when dad got in, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's what makes our, that's what makes life so cool. You know, we can look back and, you know, obviously, especially it's like with my dad, with our dad being passed away, you just, you look at, you just look at their life and you're like, man, gosh, that person did a lot of really cool things. You know what I mean? In their own way. So, you know, it's sad that they're not around, but when you reflect on, their time on this planet and the time with you and the, the relationships that you had individually, right? Like Eric and him and he and Jenny and he and I, and 
our mom, you know what I mean? It's just really, it's really cool how every family's different. And, you know, except we were talking about your dad and it's just like, I think, man, we're pretty fortunate that our dads and our families, obviously we, they were, we had the nuclear family experience and, you know, like our families are pretty good. You know what I mean? So I think we're all pretty blessed, right? We are very, very, very blessed, man. No very question. blessed. Okay. So last thing I have, and I'll leave you alone. Your mom, Ruth, is from Germany. And you yeah. got the opportunity to go back with your mom. <laughs> oh, really? So, Jared, this is awesome. I'll be real quick with this one. So Please we go take your time. I, I so 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 listen. So my mom, so so da, our dad, our dad's like, I want you to go over Ruth. Eric and Jenny got to go over. Scotty's going. And I was like, Where's your mom from in Germany? And when did she come from Germany to America? Oh, I'm gonna mess this up. Uh she came over when she was 15. So um, your mom so, still has a pretty thick German accent. Yeah. You probably yep. can't hear it. I can hear it. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, me, it, it sounds, you know, what I'm used to it, but she does. She has a thick um, accent. But um, so she came to America when she was 15, kind of split up the family because they had larger family. Um, she actually lived with her aunt and uncle, which became my Oma and Opa. So they were like my grandma, and grandpa, but they were my mom's aunt and uncle. And uh, so. I, I go over to Germany with my mom and we're hanging out with um, my mom's aunt. That's who we stayed with. And we ended up going one afternoon to my mom's. So my mom's brother's house. And there was this dude there. <laughs> he was like, there was this, he was older than me, but he was real little. And uh, he had this crazy longer hair and he was like wearing jean shorts and we're sitting on this picnic table, we're eating and my mom, we're talking about wrestling, whatever. And my mom goes, Oh, the dude was, I don't know how I was related to this guy, but she goes, yeah, let's just say your cousin Timo, he wrestled. And so she rattles off some German and I'm like looking at this guy and in my mind, I'm like, don't i'm like no and i could just see him like he's sitting at the table and he gets up and he literally didn't have a shirt on he had jean shorts on and he had these little adidas uh like samba soccer he kicks his shoes off and i'm like oh shit and she's like he wants to wrestle him scotty wrestle him and i'm like i don't want it she's like oh just wrestle him and he walks around the table and he like grabs my arm you know like and he was like and he's like pulling me out in the grass and I'm like all right and so I kick my shoes off and we're kind of squared up and my mom's like oh Scotty wrestle him he wrestled and uh I just kicked the shit out of this guy I just I dude I tied whap, 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 boom and shot him. I think I double legged him and gut wrenched him I bow and arrowed him and I was rolling him around I just rolled him about I mean, it seemed like 30 or 40 times, but I just, boom, 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 boom. and she goes, okay, 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 stop. And so I get off the guy and I pop up and there's like grass all over us. He's got grass in his hair. And he's like, he like, he like walks over to me and he like shakes my hand real fast. And he just kind of like limped away and sat in his chair by this tree. And I was like, is he okay? And she's like, well, you, you, I, you went really hard. I'm like, you told me to go hard. He was going to, he wrestled in the club. I'm like, what do you, what? That's what they, you, you made this happen. <laughs> yeah, I beat up this German dude in, his, in a yard wrestling. I'm like, in jean shorts. And dude, yeah, I'm like, sure. I didn't even want to do it. Uh, but, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, I wonder if that dude is like, I remember when that American just kicked my ass in that backyard. <laughs> It's just weird, you know. What I mean? Like, <laughs> like it was a real weird thing. You weren't welcome yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, sorry about. Yeah, no wonder. Why welcome to Deutschland. Welcome to yeah, Deutschland. Yeah, yeah, das ist gut. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. 
Fritta, <laughs> Fritta, <laughs> Apple Fritta. Oh, yeah, Dolph is nine. Scotty, nine. Scotty, <laughs> nine. 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 Ich bin sieben, nine. Deutsche Freiman, nine. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah, pretty wild, man. <laughs> That's, a, that's that's good stuff, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Is that, uh, is that they drive music? everywhere with the windows up too? They smoke and uh, they have the windows up. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, ma. I'm like, look, I'm in the passenger front because he's like, Scott, do you I'm like, I got to roll this window down. It's 89 degrees in this car. And she's like, don't do it. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, dude, I'm dying here. And dude, I rolled green. the window. Yeah, I rolled it down. I cranked it this much, and the guy looked at me. And maybe rolled up, and I was like, I ain't rolling it up. She's like, Scotty, roll the window up. I'm like, I ain't rolling it up. So we rolled. I kept it down, and she's like, they think you'll get sick. And I'm like, well, it's whatever. I might die in an old dengue fever. I sat in this hot-ass car. <laughs> so we drove to this mountain, and we went up on this big mountain, and we were in the mountains. It was awesome. It was like one of the most beautiful places ever. Probably the Matterhorn or something. Yeah, we went, we, we were on this, up in this mountain, side of this mountain, there was like a castle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, but, you know, just, uh, it's like, think about that. It's like, we're talking about it. I'm like, my, my, my mom is an immigrant from Germany. You know what I mean? It's just like, wow. it's cool, wow. right? Well, That's cool. You got to go back and experience that. You know what I mean? It's, I love it. how many people get to do that? I love that you beat a dude up in jean shorts. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah, cut I off jeans. Yeah, no, stop. Time. I'm like, I just kept scoring. <laughs> like, no, that's tech like, fall. <laughs> that was stupid. I love it. I think I hit my knee on a tree root in one point. Uh, I don't know. I love that. Oh, that's good uh, stuff. Man. Is, that bore, is that boring me? He's like, prepare to laugh. <laughs> like, oh, well, <laughs> it's just. And the good you know stories, man. Is, man. Just energy and fun, and I just this is cool. I no, just, this is fun. I, dig, glad, I uh, dig you guys, man. You guys are some of the honestly, you guys are some of the coolest people I know, and I'm just I'm just glad that I'm friends with you guys, and you guys uh, are awesome. Same here, and you know, you, you, you talked about your dad, and you know, obviously, you know, we all go way back, but you know, being there, your dad showing that was one of the things that kind of. You know, I've told Zeb for years, start us podcast. And I think I've told you this, but, you know, for me to ha start having people on and sharing stories, because he had so many stories, you know, watching back the Zeb interviews with him, it's just, he had so many stories. And, you know, I guess that was one of the big inspirations of starting, you know, a podcast was, you know, to capture these stories, you know, you know, being there and hearing his stories and being at a showing, it was kind of like, I want to capture some of these stories and not, they're not for me. You know what I mean? They're for other people to hear. Right. Yeah. And, you know, being yeah, there right. with your family and, you know, the seeing everyone there that he influenced, you know, he, he touched a lot of lives and, you know, definitely a huge influence and outside of wrestling too. Right. So, yeah, it's really cool too. Cause that, I think, I think, I believe, yeah, Zeb did that interview with him. That was that, was that OAC Zeb when you did that interview yeah, with him? That was him? OAC. OAC. He, yeah. And he just was never so that when I think about him, I'm like he had to be just so uncomfortable. I mean, you know, what I mean that just wasn't <laughs> his. I mean, he was obviously comfortable enough to do it with Zeb, right? He trusted and Zeb's Zeb, good but, at that, right? Zeb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just like he, and if you watch the interview, it was a really good interview. You know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. it's so simple, just Ron Burnett. It, being Ron Burnett and right. just talking about just the differences between Eric and I and the the kids and like Logan and, and yeah, the kids you talk about Logan, coached, yeah. Yeah. you know, and just uh, yeah. um, you know, pretty cool. I have to about, put that in the show notes, man, because it was it was really cool. You know, you could tell it was you wouldn't tell that he's out of his comfort zone, but you know, anyone that knew him probably was like, you know, that's not not his thing, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, he just was – that's just not – it just wasn't, it, like, his 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 MO, right? It was – Right. it was – That was hey, early man. on before, you know, you know, you, I mean, YouTube was around, but it wasn't like it is not, right? I mean, where yeah. everyone gives an interview now, and so it was pretty 
yeah, it was cool that it was good that Zeb was in that spot mm-hmm. to grab him and be like, hey, man, you want to do this? And now he was like receptive because mm-hmm. he could have been like, oh, no, 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 right. no, no. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm good, whatever. Zeb was aware yeah. and, and persistent. Yeah. Sure, right? Yeah. So got to be, dude. No, yeah, I did record th- this stuff. Thankfully, man. You, yeah, right, right. My papa so, Ferd, man, he had me over, and I finally was able to get him and my all my cousins and my my dad and all my my uh, aunts and uncles are so thankful for that. You know what I mean? And I, obviously, so am I. Yeah, that was those videos with your papa Ferd are super cool. Yeah, real cool. Because you really because you learn about that dude's. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so interesting. Yeah, it's right? really interesting. And you, yeah. and you have it. Like, what's so cool is I could, when we're done, I could watch that interview with my dad. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I could yeah. watch it. And uh, and it's just nice because you get to, like, because he's not, you know, they're no longer physically here. So you can't call him. You can't talk to him. But you can watch an interview and be like, oh, man, that's that dude's voice. And that was cool. And I remember that, you know, so yeah, dude, those are, um, those are awesome moments. Right. And, that's yeah, and I've you talked guys... to people that forget their, they forget that voice. They don't hear the voice. They'll forget it. Isn't that yeah. weird? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just not, it's not in your, you're not hearing Ears all the time. Yeah. Right. So it's like, see, it's like, dude, I'm thinking about his voice right now. And it's, uh, so yeah, it's just pretty wild, man. Yeah, it's crazy. But no, the the the, the podcast, this thing, you two and your your mindsets and your vision and just the type of guys you are, and how you guys collaborate and just your creativity. It's just gonna be really cool, man, to see how it continues to grow. You know what I mean? So I'm excited, man. I'm happy for you guys. It's really cool. Well, dude, thanks, thanks for letting me do it. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks for letting me do it too. No. I appreciate it. No, thanks for yeah. showing up. Any, man. Any, yeah, man. I'm sorry I was like late, but you got the talk no, with Jody, no. which is always cool. I like that because her and I are like literally a team, and it's super oh, cool, sure. man. So uh, a lot of credit goes to that to that woman. She she's the the glue that keeps our family together. Um, she has more of an integral part in our wrestling program than she would probably say. So I'm super blessed. I love her, and she's great, man. So thanks for incorporating her. Yeah, for sure, man. You guys, you guys are a good team, and uh, you know, awesome friends, man. Awesome friends. We're we're, we're all blessed, right? We're all blessed. Yeah, so. yeah, for sure, for sure. So, Zeb, you have anything all right. else? All right, let's wrap it up. All right, fellas. All right, fellas. All right. Always all right. good. I appreciate it. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. And, all right. Uh, all right. Uh-huh. It-